my hobby is basically uh, bowling is actually my passion and uh, anything to do with physical like, exercises. I'm a nutritionist as well, I'm a personal trainer. I do that as a part-time job as well, besides bowling. I used to work in a uh, bank for almost 10 years. I was in marketing department and then moved to product development. And I quit my job three months ago to pursue my, actually, uh, what's called my passion, actually. My personal goal is actually uh, to, to, to win one of the world rankings in autonomous mobility. Uh, it's uh, this particular type of tournament is actually it's an international tournament and it's ranked. Uh, it's, it's a part of uh, the PBA tournaments, option of the association tournaments. So if I win this tournament every time, I, I, I win over all best of the best in the international level as well as PBA tournament players. So that's one of my goals of the world. As much as I enjoy bowling, as much as I survive, I see the shot I feel. And just keep learning, there's no gap of the playing football or playing tennis, for example. Yeah, just play. There's a gap we can go and we can beat. We are more than 35 years old. While bowling, you know, you have a lot of gap. You can compete up to 60 years old. 60 years old. And uh, always something there that makes you a good ball. And uh, you know, the more knowledge you have, the better you become. It's a mixture of um, playing tournaments, participation, learning, you know, and a lot of knowledge. Um, it's just a mixture of some of the things that we become a ball. It's not something to do with being really gifted. Yes, it is, as a part of that, but uh, yeah, it's just about hard work. My favorite uh, player actually is uh, Tim Mack. He's from the United States. He's one of the best uh, amateur bowlers in the world. Um, not only he won more than 60 tournaments internationally, he just he seems inspired me in a way that uh, the way he bowls, the way he communicates with people, the way how it's how good he is with people. And he's always you know eager to, to, to coach everyone. And he's a really uh, a role model for a lot of, lot of good guys out there. He's one of the, and he's one of the best. After, after announcing myself that I'll be able to compete locally and win a couple of tournaments, and uh, it's just a, a, a doorstep for next level. After five years, I start competing. It's not like me to decide to compete. That's the time that I was able to see beating other professional bowlers. The most difficult and challenging tournament I just faced probably uh, two months ago where uh, I won uh, a major tournament in, Sinai, in Egypt, it's called Sinai International Open Championship. It was actually its own uh, in, the, in the last frame where I had to get three strikes in a row to win just by one pin. And you know, uh, you just get one chance to win, you know, you just get a gap, a little gap to win something and it's just major. And that's why I faced it. Was really, it was really challenging for me. It was really difficult for me. Um, the guys who I bowled with against, um, he's one of the best bowlers in Kuwait. And um, I was the only one from Bahrain. I won the tournament and I bowled really good from, from qualification stage until the splitter. And it was very challenging as well. Shoulder ligaments torn, and I wasn't able to complete it. Finished stage two. Uh, I won first stage. I was fifth uh, out of 180 bowlers. Then, when I moved to, uh, I bowled in Macau, for example. The day after that, Mokuma, I bowled different way. The way that I was, I wasn't using my front, front muscle, my front shoulder. I was Bowling in a way that to avoid that injury, I was able to to bowl good. That was one of my advantages. It's just about experience, how to uh, tackle those problems. There's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's something to do with You have to face so many failures to push you and keep you, you know, moving and to to learn from mistakes. 
and all those mistakes it will show you show it clearly and then you have to go back and just you know work on them and the more you work on those and less errors you, you, you can you know, face in tournaments that's how you become good and that's how you end up become a champion any sponsor to support us financially or any product support. So it's all got to do with individual effort. You know, we pay from our own expense. You, know, you pay for money to practice, travel expense. You pay for your ticket, per diem, even the entry, entry fees for the tournament. So that's what, what limits us to, to join other tournaments. And this, you get something in return and you win a couple of bucks and you know, you'll be able to you know, cash it in for other tournaments. Uh, my first year, but my, my bowling career, it wasn't. I was, you know, getting so annoyed and getting worse, so, so angry why I didn't win and all this. And I started playing more and practice more and more. And then I've learned that it's just a, a chance for somebody else who worked harder than me. And I have accepted that. The way I break my time, actually, it's it's all got to do with time management. Um, I have to take care of my family first. I have to take care of my work. And uh, it's and I, I go to the gym as well, like five times a week. I bowl, practice four times a week. I have to manage the tournaments. I participate around 12 to 15 tournaments a year, international tournaments and um, all local tournaments. So it's kind of hard to do all these, you know, and we stay focused and to do each one of them perfectly. Uh, the things I always learn in every tournament is basically I have to to do as much for the start time management. I have to keep my myself motivated regardless of the, the social life, you know, the life pressures, you know, the family involvement, the commitment you got, you know. So the older you get the the, the, the smaller your window of winning and you know achieving things gets smaller and smaller. So you know having said that you have to work harder and harder actually. And uh, and the harder you work, the stronger you become at the end. What motivates me to pursue international tournaments is it's basically everybody's dream. It's the cap, it's the edge for everybody's dream to achieve. Actually, when you compete and when you see those bowlers on YouTube and when you're young, you see those bowlers' names and, and bowling magazines. You know, it's it's where you dream. You know, where you see this is where, where you want to reach. So when you bowl international tournaments and you bowl against those bowlers. Uh, that's what makes you motivated, actually. To see them in front of you bowling and compete with you. And if you win, and if you beat a couple of them, regardless whether you win a tournament or not, that's what makes you motivated. And it's all got to do with the more you practice, you know, the harder you work on yourself, the more you beat other those bowlers. You know? So that's what keeps, keeps any bowler motivated. Uh, lately, um, I was lucky to be a part of a um, you know, uh, major uh, leading bowling company called Prospect. They only support me for products, you know, for the bowling balls and uh, accessories. Um, and I do represent them for, uh, you know, in Asia and Middle East. That's a good start for me, actually. I know it's not too late, they don't really offer any financial support. However, they do sponsor, they give me free tries for five tournaments in Europe. But I still have to pay for financial, you know, I have to pay for tickets and the accommodation. Uh, they can benefit from us, any bowler, uh, the way they see us as a, uh, as they call, we call like a sort of, uh, marketing material. You know, we carry their logo everywhere we go. You know, you go to a tournament if they sponsor for center for one tournament. The number of spectators that are there is like more than three thousand, and uh, it's always televised. You know, supplied in the finals, and you get exposure. You know, in that particular region, you know, whether it's uh, the, the tournament is covered by you know with newspapers out there. And uh, that's how it is. You know, when you come home, you know, there is always locally, in local newspapers, there is like a news press releases before, during, and after tournaments. So that's kind of exposure you get. I went around uh, more than 
probably t- t- 32 tournaments. Um, mainly the ranked tournaments, local small tournaments in Awari, um, Sherry, uh, some tournaments in Finland, so probably different bowling centers. Number of titles achieved actually uh, locally more than probably 30 tournaments, um, international probably two, and one regional tournament. Yeah, I got probably a couple of uh, gold and, uh, and you know, a couple of medals, around 20, 20 medals since 1993. The, the advice that I offer people um, is basically not to compare themselves to any other people. It's just to compare themselves to their role model. It's different than compare themselves to other people. Everybody, every bowler or any athlete has to focus on his goals only. Not to compete or to be better than somebody else. You know, you, you, you look at your, your future as a phase, you know, you have to finish every phase yourself. You know, what, playing locally, that's phase one, playing regionally, that's phase two, and so on. And every phase you have to work hard harder and harder. That's how it is. You know, when you become a champion, just become a champion to yourself. Just fulfill that personal satisfaction in yourself.